States, Democrats, Republicans, visitors from overseas. And so yep. now, now you have this dangerous scene playing out. And it, it just reminds me, Wolf, over the years of the different security changes we have seen. Remember back in 1998, a gunman stormed through those doors and killed two Capitol Police officers. After 9-11, there were additional security changes, but clearly the Capitol Police caught off guard here today. Certainly. Manu Raju, you're up on Capitol Hill. You're inside. There's a total lockdown, and there's a really dramatic picture, something I never thought I would see, but I want you to describe what is going on inside the U.S. Capitol right now. Yeah, absolutely stunning, Wolf. A protester breaching the Senate floor, where the members of the Senate were gathering, where they were debating, and actually in the Senate floor. And Wolf, there's a picture that you're showing right now, a picture of the House floor, where there is an armed standoff on the House floor, where you can see Capitol Police with their arms drawn, and members of Congress ducking under their chairs there as that armed standoff was occurring. We were, uh, that was happening. That's right where the House members were debating, where they were uh, discussing whether to certify Joe Biden's electoral votes and for Arizona. And a protester, apparently an armed protester, with scores of other protesters just feet from where the leadership was of the, of the U.S. House, where were gathered, where the members, rank and file members, were debating and causes armed standoff. A member, uh, a cap, uh, you see multiple Capitol Police officers drawing their firearms, concerned about a violent, potentially deadly situation and trying to de-escalate the situation. This, we were told some time ago, this armed standoff occurred. It's unclear what exactly is happening uh, in, in the House chamber uh, right now. There was also another picture that we saw of a, a one of these protesters in the Senate chamber himself, uh, sitting actually at the at the at the chair that Mike Pence, who's the, who's the president of the Senate, the vice president of the United States, was sitting. A, a protester sitting in the chair of the uh, uh, presiding officer who sits during the uh, floor debate. So you're seeing protesters breach actually get onto the Senate floor, and on the House side of the Capitol, members ducking, taking cover, wearing gas masks as an individual outside the House chamber with multiple police officers and their firearms drawn, right? And just moments ago, hopefully the situation resolves itself in a peaceful manner, but you can see, Wolf, how scary the situation is right now. Do you personally reach out to the president for more support? I've already talked to the president. Um, I called him. Um, I think we need to make a statement, um, make sure that we can calm individuals down. Now, I don't know who these people are. Remember, when you have a big crowd, there's people who can get into a crowd. I don't know who they are. I don't have any report. But this part is whatever is happening is unacceptable. There are people that came, to this, came here to protest peacefully, that could be hurt in this process as well. But what is happening right now is unacceptable. What did the president say to you when you called him? He, he put out a tweet as well for people to stay safe, for people to not do this. I was explaining to him what was going on. And that was that? Yeah. Okay. You, you had mentioned there in your answer there that you would expect perhaps a, a bigger statement other than just a tweet. Did he give you an expectation that that would come or, well, or not? I know he's giving... He's getting reports of what's happening, and he does not accept people doing this type of behavior. Um, but I know he was getting other reports as well. I want to give him the a law and order president. Yeah. yeah, understood. Sir, can, can, can you give us an idea, uh, based on your location with, with Capitol Police, is, is the situation subsiding or is it still escalating? Can you characterize that? I can't tell from what I see, you know. Um, and I can't even tell you where I'm at, it's probably going to be safe to say. Um, but uh, I, feel, I feel very safe with the Capitol Police. Um, and and what, what will you do next, sir? Well, I hope we bring some order and we bring this country back together and we, we, we unite. There are things that divide us, but we are all Americans. This is not who we are, this is not how we act. We, we, people have taken this too far to one another. 
too personal to one another. We can disagree with people. We can have differences of opinion. We can debate the hardest things there are, but at the end of the day, we are supposed to be the first to change the rest of the world. Our democracy works. Sir, should we expect to see the president on camera this afternoon? I would think, I would think so. I'm sorry, again, what was that? I, d I don't know, I would think so, if that would be appropriate. Okay, sir, thank you for your time. We will, we, yeah, um, just losing a little bit of signal here. Um, yeah, it, it stays, it, it sounds loud behind you, but thank you for your time. Uh, Rich Edson's on the ground there, Chad Pergram. Let's go to Chad first and get a sense for uh, hey, what he was picking Bill up and now. Uh, check that. Yeah, okay, we got Chad Rich Edson, Pergram's we got here. Chad Pergram. Yeah, I got a Chad. Hang on one second here. Griff Jenkins is also out on the street. Uh, Brett Bear's got some new information. Brett, I want to bring you in. What do you have now? Hey, Brett. Uh, oh, my gosh. So many things flying. Hey, Bill. Uh, listen, All the... Right. I've just got off the phone, and uh, Nancy Pelosi and Mayor Bowser with D.C. have requested uh, the National Guard be deployed to get uh, to clear the the protesters. Specifically, the request comes from Mayor Bowser in D.C. Uh, through the Capitol Police. Uh, that is being analyzed right now and being told by the Department of Defense uh, officials and that they are considering that, but they do not want uh, the images of... Uh, uniformed troops on the Capitol. So they are considering an option, hasn't been decided yet, uh, to backfill more police and to have a bigger police presence to try to get rid of the protesters. Uh, this is an incredibly dangerous situation as we see it right now. Uh, there are protesters not only on the House floor, but the Senate floor. And uh, you heard the House majority leader there uh, yet, you know, we haven't heard from the president on that mode to get the National Guard involved in this. You remember, and all of these uprising protests, looting in different cities, he was very quick to say that the governors and the mayors should call the National Guard and that he would get them in and it would be cleared out in a minute. Um, he has the power, the Department of Defense has the power to do the same thing after this request has now been officially made from the D.C. mayor and the Capitol Police. Uh, but that decision has not been made as of yet from the Defense Department. So what we're watching here is a moment in history. And uh, Bill, you're getting that news from the House Majority Leader about shots fired. There are a lot of people I'm getting texts from inside the Capitol that are concerned about safety and a number of different things happening. Well, uh, Brett, thank you. Uh, get some more information and come on back. I just want to get to our reporters. And uh, I'm sitting here in Atlanta, by the way, Brett, and I'm staring at a board that we used throughout the night last night. Uh, no, we don't need to show it, guys, but in two months ago. And you've got a U.S. Senate race that is too close to call because it's separated by four-tenths of a percentage point. And if it stays there, you're going to get a recount here to decide the, who controls the, the U.S. Senate. Uh, and then we moved to the morning hours today, and the president came out about 11.45, spoke for about an hour and a half, uh, and he was fired up. And his, his supporters there had flown in last night from all over the country to gather there as he had beckoned them to come to uh, Washington, D.C. After that, we went to the floor of the Senate, floor of the House, and we listened to Mitch McConnell make a case. Uh, we listened to Ted Cruz make his case about Arizona, and things were just starting to roll into what we expected to be a, an hours-long proceeding uh, in Congress that would eventually move toward a point where they would certify the Electoral College. January 6, 2021. Screen right is a, a moment we watched about an hour ago. Chad Pergram with us now. I'm not sure where you are, Chad. We haven't spoken to you in 30 minutes. What do you have now? Brett, I want to be very clear about something. This is the most significant breach of an American government institution since the Battle of Bladensburg, August 24th, 1814, when the British came and burned the Capitol and also burned the White House. We have never had an instance of an incursion inside the U.S. Capitol building to this degree uh, since that time. Uh, let's be clear, the mob upended American democracy today as they try to count the Electoral College. You have people taking over the House chamber, the Senate chamber, 
gunshots on Capitol Hill, an utter breakdown of the constitutional process. Bedlam. Now, the question is, what do they do to get this back on pace? The House and Senate, they have recessed subject to the call of the chair. They were individually debating the Arizona slate of electoral votes. Now, at some point, they have to come back and complete that process and can vote. Under the Electoral Count Act of 1887, you can recess for a certain period of time, but once you start that joint session, which is what started with Vice President Pence presiding today at 1 o'clock, you have to conclude this process within five days. You basically have until the 11th of January. So it's possible that they could, if they believe that the U.S. Capitol is unsafe to continue with this process, nowhere does it say in the Constitution or in the House or Senate rules that you have to meet here or do this process here. Transition of power. Congressman, you uh, went to Iraq, as you note, uh, to help that country uh, to try to bring democracy to that country. What goes through your mind when you see these images here of people actually, Americans, some of your colleagues in the House who also served, by the way, uh, actually trying to stop democracy? I don't understand it, I really. I, I, think, I think it's easy to get lost in the maze of, of constitutional abstract arguments when common sense suggests that what we're doing here has no constitutional and also, think how messed up it is to give thousands of people false hope that you can somehow change the result of an election. Uh, and, and right now, we're seeing the consequence of that. And, and someone said earlier, I was listening to your program, that you know Republicans are fond of saying we're a nation of, of laws, not men. Well, that's true in part, but we are a nation of free people. And free people need to govern themselves long before they encounter any law. It's that that holds the country together more than any law. And so there may not be any law against what the objectors are trying to do, but there are serious consequences every time we break an unwritten rule, a norm in this country. It is harder to repair than any statute or any statute. There are costs to what is happening right now. I want to bring in uh, one of your colleagues, uh, a, a fellow uh, Midwestern Republican and a, fe a fellow uh, veteran, uh, Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Uh, Congressman, where are you? Are you okay? Are you safe? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I, I will give my uh, specific location. I'm good. And, uh, you know, this is uh, disgusting. And I, you know, second, you know, everything that Mike just said. He's, he's right on. The, um, the fact, the fact is, and, and you've been, you've been making this point very vocally, Congressman Kinzinger, the, the fact is that President Trump unleashed this. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, look, you know, all you have to do, and, and I know you, you look at Twitter too to see what's, what's going on, and, and you see these people that now start calling this thing, you know, equivalent to 1776. I mean, I was seeing this for weeks. That's why I, for weeks, have warned that there was going to be violence on January 6th. You give people false hope. You have leaders that are un, they do not have the courage to tell people the truth, which is that Congress cannot just come in and on its own whim make a happy wish of who's president. And when you don't have the courage as a leader to tell people the truth, you end up getting people that believe the conspiracies and the false truth, and you get a capital storm like today. This is absolutely, utterly despicable, and every single Republican leader has got to call this out forcefully and be held accountable. Congressman Ken Kinzinger, your, your, your fellow uh, veteran and, and fellow Midwestern Republican, Congressman Gallagher, said that he, uh, he hasn't seen anything like this since he was in Iraq. Well, what about you? Yeah, I, same thing. I mean, this, this is something that, you know, you guys would be covering right now if it was happening maybe in Belarus or, you know, anywhere else around the globe. Uh, anywhere else around the globe, we would call this a coup attempt. That's what I think it is. And, uh, but have no fear, the guardrails of democracy and the Constitution will hold, and we will succeed, and I think when this is over, we'll look back and realize where this cancer has come from and, uh, and go after it. Uh, Congressman, uh, President Trump uh, tweeted, quote, I'm asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful, no violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order, respect the law, and our great men and women in blue, thank you. Unquote. Is that enough, Congressman Kinzinger? No. I mean, that's, that's cowardice. Cowardice is, you know, is trying to just say, oh, we want you to be peaceful. We want you... 
He needs to stand up and say, I lost the election. Let the count go ahead. The conspiracies I've been spewing out are false, period. And this is not 1776. And the Pentagon needs to do everything that is requested in terms of the deployment of the National Guard, et cetera, to restore order to the people's house, because that is what makes us different than so many failed countries that we look at all around the globe. Jim Hines of Connecticut and Congressman Hines, I know you, like the colleagues uh, that Jake was just talking to, you're sheltering in place in the U.S. Capitol. Set the scene for us. What is happening right now? Very scary moment 20 minutes ago uh, when we were on the House floor and it was very clear that protesters had breached uh, and had gotten right around the floor, so they barely the door. Uh, I was just talking with uh, some of my colleagues about the fact that we spent an awful lot of money on security, that they were rolling file cabinets and uh, and coat uh, racks in front of uh, in front of the doors. Um, they evacuated us from the chamber. Uh, it was a tense moment because uh, lots of weapons drawn, uh, gas masks were out, and we were ordered to, to get gas masks and be prepared to put them on because apparently gas had been used in the rotunda. Uh, but now uh, they've evacuated all of us that were in the, in the chamber to uh, a, a location that we've been instructed not to talk about. Uh, but you've obviously got very uh, a lot of anxiety here. Which is understandable. We have seen photos uh, of the House floor, presumably after you left. Uh, you talked about coat racks and, and tables moved in front of doors. We saw a, a, a photo, which is just unbelievable that that is happening in the U.S., never mind the U.S. Capitol, uh, of what looked like law enforcement with their arms drawn. We're actually looking at video right now of, of these anarchists interaction and these people who were involved in this insurrection. They broke the glass in the United States Capitol, and now they are climbing through the window. This happened moments ago on the grounds of the United States Capitol. This is likely what you're hearing inside, and this is the reason you said uh, that you were uh, told to shelter in place, moved to an undisclosed location. How much of this can you hear and even see, or at least could you, when you were still on the House floor? Well, when we left the House floor, um, we were taken out through a door where they had tactical teams keeping protesters on their bellies, literally outside the House doors. So people had gotten uh, uh, to the doors of the chamber, windows had been broken, and as I said, when we left, there were officers with their guns drawn and pointed at the doors, uh, and, you know, obviously indicating that they thought there was a threat about to come through. Um, anyway, uh, my colleagues and I right now uh, are a little shell-shocked. You, know, you might imagine emotions are running pretty high right now. This is something that didn't need to happen, uh, and it's something that shouldn't have happened. Uh, there's a lot to take stock of here in terms of how we got to this place, what President Trump said and did uh, to, to set this off, and quite frankly, how the Capitol could be so vulnerable. I've been working in this building for a, a, a while now, and I've always assumed that uh, when things got ugly, they could push a button and doors would be sealed and everything would be fine. That obviously turns out not to be the case. It doesn't feel like we're through it yet, but uh, we've got a lot to learn from what happened today. Well, well stay safe. Uh, let us know if you see and hear anything more, and we appreciate you giving us an update. Okay. Congressman Himes, Congressman Gallagher, Congressman uh, Kinzinger, uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, stay safe for you and your staffs. Uh, I want to bring in uh, Pamela Brown right now because, Pamela, we're only seeing some of the violence on the outside of the Capitol building. You, you have more information about what's going on inside in this armed insurrection, in this attempted coup uh, by President Trump and his supporters. Tell us more. Well, to tell you just how out of control this has gotten, Jake, a woman is now in critical condition after being shot in the chest on the Capitol grounds. This is according to two sources familiar with the matter. The sources uh, couldn't provide any further details on the circumstances of the shooting, but uh, sources I've spoken to and uh, to my uh, colleague Noah Gray are telling us that there were shots fired there on the Capitol grounds, and they additionally add that a woman is now in critical condition 
after being shot in the chest on Capitol grounds. Again, we don't know the circumstances surrounding that, uh, but that just tells you right there how much this has escalated, how quickly it's escalated, and how out of control this has gotten. I'm told uh, from a local source on the ground, a law enforcement source, that uh, police from surrounding areas, from Montgomery County, Maryland, Prince George's County, Maryland, Virginia State Police, have all been called in uh, by MPD to help them uh, with these overwhelming crowds, the chaos and the anarchy that's taking place right now. Horrible, horrible news. Blood now spilled. We don't know uh, any more details about it. But again, this is violence that has been inspired by President Trump, by President Trump supporters, by Senator Cruz, by Senator Hawley, by the more than 100 members of the House who were objecting to the constitutional responsibilities, the, the fact that Joe Biden was elected. It is an absolutely disgraceful moment in American history, and there are specific villains who are responsible for it. I want to go to Manu Raju right now. Manu, tell us more about what you're seeing on Capitol Hill. Yeah, well, the, uh, possible good news on the Senate side of the Capitol. Our colleague Ted Barrett uh, has been told by police officers on the Senate side that it has been cleared of rioters, of protesters, of demonstrators. The Senate floor, there's debris on the Senate floor because that was breached by protesters, but there's no more protesters, demonstrators, rioters. They're not in the Senate floor. They're not on the Senate wing of the Capitol. These demonstrators have been pushed into the Capitol Rotunda area. Now, that Rotunda is the dome of the Capitol that is in between the House and the Senate. There are many protesters that are there at the moment. The Police are escorting out these rioters outside of the Capitol. They've been uh, on the east and west uh, front steps of the Capitol. They've been uh, they're being escorted out one by one from that side. Now it's uncertain what's happening on the House side of the Capitol. What we do know is that the House members have been evacuated. Uh, they've been uh, they've been told to go into their offices. They're not leaving their offices. It's similar on the Senate side, uh, but we do know that there was an armed standoff that occurred on the House floor, don't know what the latest is on that situation because everybody has been told to clear from that area, including the pool reporters who are in the gallery that witnessed that armed standoff. Uncertain what's going on with that. But there are still many rioters, demonstrators who have breached the security perimeters, have come into the building. They are now cleared from the Senate side of the Capitol. They are in the Capitol Rotunda and the police are trying to get them out one by one as the situation unfolds uncertain again what's happening in the house as we saw that video of, of individuals breaking a window entering the building that appeared to be on the house side of the capitol so there are many many of these rioters still in the building but at the moment the members are staying away from this they're locked down and the senate side appears clear at the moment so there by us, no. What we have by us is basically protesters and a few uh, other folks milling around here, but the police activity is all that. Stanford, why don't you show up here? We'll get up this way. This is Constitution Avenue right here. This is the north side of the Capitol. This is where the Senate side of the Capitol is and the Senate buildings are. A lot of police activity up there. That was just Capitol Hill Police. Well, then they were joined by Metropolitan Police Department. That's Washington, D.C. Police. They've been streaming up in that area to try to assist on all of this. All of that police manpower has been to congregate towards those office buildings. So if you can kind of see through the trees there on the left, that's the Russell Senate office building, one of the primary office buildings on the Senate side. And then across the street, you've got the Capitol complex. It's a, basically a mirror image on the south side of the Capitol, the other side of the Capitol. And you've got police officers who are congregating to the building okay. because that's where the breach is. That's where the issue is. Where we're standing out right here, uh, we've got plenty of police vehicles and we've seen ambulances and uh, plenty of other emergency vehicles out here, but there is very little, if real, no police presence, security presence where we are, because the action uh, and where they're trying to get people out of and we're trying to prevent other people from going in is all within the Capitol building. And, you know, frankly, whenever you come around this area, if we were here, let's say, one week ago, there are plenty of Capitol Hill police officers who are watching the perimeter of the Capitol complex. It's a massive complex. Um, you do see some, I guess there are some police officers sort of close to try to prevent people to get up from that side of Constitution, but the plaza here where you okay. see all of these people, 
That's just packed and packed with protesters, and that's really all you've got over there, Bill. Rich Edson, thank you. Eyes on the ground there with Rich. We can confirm now, Fox News has learned that a shooting victim was transported from the U.S. Capitol about 35 minutes ago. Uh, no other details yet, but that timeline would sync up with the conversation we had with Kevin McCarthy right when we came on the air around 3 o'clock East Coast time when he heard a, a call come over the Capitol Hill Police radio uh, that shots had been fired inside, and now the victim has been taken to uh, the local hospital. As we watch that, I want to bring in my colleague Chris Wallace, who was watching as well, and uh, Chris, we've got 90 minutes till sundown. I don't know what they do with the National Guard. We'll wait on that until we get greater clarification. Uh, but um, for the time being, you need to secure this place, and you need to get it done now. I couldn't agree more, Bill. Uh, and there are pictures that are out uh, that indicate that, at least in the case of the Senate, that protesters did get into the Senate chamber. There's a picture out, a still picture, you can see right there. Uh, of a protester who is sitting, just to give you context, that is the, the chair where the presiding officer sits during debate in the Senate. That's the chair that, that Vice President Pence was sitting in at one point during the debate in the Senate, and there was a protester who got in, took the chair of the presiding officer of the Senate, and said Trump won that election. He was not the only one, obviously, to get in. That shot was taken by a pool producer before they shut down uh, the, the Senate chamber. And one of the other questions that keeps coming up is what role President Trump perhaps could play. You can see them now, well, they're, they've been able to, to breach some windows and are climbing into the Capitol that way. Uh, some, some members, top Republicans, are talking about what more the president could do to try to, to stop this. Mick Mulvaney. Uh, the previous White House Chief of Staff said the President's tweet is not enough. He can stop this now and needs to do, do exactly that. Tell these folks to go home. The President has said stop the violence, but he hasn't said to go home. Alyssa Farah, who used to be the White House Communications Director, before she left uh, to become a, uh, a spokesperson for the Republican candidates down in Georgia, tweeted out, condemn this now, Donald Trump. You are the only one they will listen to for our country. Uh, and there's been a whole host of tweets from, from Republicans. Adam Kinzinger, a, uh, sometimes a Trump critic, a Republican from Illinois. This is a coup attempt. Tom Cotton, very conservative senator from Arkansas. Violence and anarchy are unacceptable. We are a nation of laws. This needs to end now. Um, so the, the breach has, has actually gotten to the Senate floor, and you can see a number of Republicans calling on President Trump to do more. Obviously, this, this assault on the Capitol took place after he spoke for an hour to crowds and urged them to head down to the Capitol, not saying he urged them uh, to, to uh, commit this violence. Uh, but a lot of people saying, these are your supporters, sir, the only one who can get them to stand down and leave is you. Chris, thank you. I want to go back inside the Capitol building. We believe it's the Capitol. Maybe it's an office building nearby. Chrissy Houlihan, a representative from Pennsylvania. Uh, Congresswoman Reckel, well, welcome to our um, ongoing coverage here. Can you tell us where you are? Sure. I'm seeing? inside. Thank you for having me. I'm in space, and I'm inside of one of the several office buildings that House members uh, have. I'm in the Longworth building. What have you heard so far? Um, so I happen to be a former uh, member of the Air Force, a, a veteran, and I'm part of a group of, uh, of uh, new members, or actually now sophomore members, who are, um, are also veterans, and we have a group text message. And so we've been exchanging various messages with one another to make sure each and every one of us are safe and, and, and secure and exchange information about what's happening. What I am seeing on the news is what you are all seeing. I walked by the Capitol steps on my way into the office at around 1 o'clock and saw uh, people who had breached the walls of the Capitol building in an incredibly worrisome and, and very, very dangerous uh, and, and, and I, as I would say, profoundly disappointing way. And I've just been watching, as you have probably, that there's been uh, a, a, somebody shot in the Capitol and people who uh, were literally praying on the Capitol floor, uh, members of Congress. 
And so this is what I've been hearing, and I'm sure you guys have been seeing that unfold on the television and on the radio as well. Were you inside the chamber when the speaker came on, the announcement said, due to an external security threat, no one could leave the Capitol complex? Did you hear that, no. or do you recall that moment? No, sir. In fact, my I'm from Pennsylvania, as you mentioned, and I had anticipated that later in the evening that the election results of Pennsylvania might be disputed. And so I and the Pennsylvania delegation were working on our speeches um, together as a group. And so I had just arrived, uh, having just finished that up to up my office and were, uh, was preparing to head to the floor for what I anticipated would be a conversation about the state of Arizona. Uh, I arrived by walking into, the, into my office building, what you're looking at on television screens right now. My office is to the left of what you're looking at. And so I passed by the protesters and heard a lot of what sounded like cannon shots. Uh, that I understand might have been a crowd dispersant tactic, uh, uh, which was also quite uh, quite alarming. To step in when the president is not capable of governing. Um, let me go to Jim Acosta right now. Uh, Jim, w what are you hearing from people inside the White House? Uh, this is an absolutely uh, revolting uh, in both senses of the word uh, display and uh, it, it is President Trump uh, inspired this encouraged this is not stopping it uh, is entirely responsible oh he's totally responsible Jake no question about it I, I should point out in just the last minute Kaylee McEnany uh, the outgoing White House press secretary she just put out a tweet saying that the president uh, at his direction has ordered the National Guard uh, over to the U.S. Capitol to get control of the situation. Uh, her tweet says, uh, the National Guard is on the way along with other federal protective services. We reiterate President Trump's call against violence and to remain peaceful. Uh, that is the uh, totality of that tweet from the White House Press Secretary, Jake. But I, I will tell you, th this is not sufficient. As you know, Jake, we have a White House briefing room. It has lights, it has cameras, it has people ready for the President of the United States or the White House Press Secretary or the Chief of Staff, at, at the very least, to come in and call for calm. Uh, that is not happening. They're putting out tweets. Uh, that's it. That, that, is, that, is the, that is the entirety of their response at this point, and it's just ins insufficient. I walked up to the upper press area of the West Wing just a short time ago. That's where the Press Secretary has her office, other, uh, other staffers in, on the comm staff and so on. These young press aides, they're the, they're the last ones who are here. He will address um, the current situation we're in. Let's check in with Garrett Haig uh, right now in the Capitol. Garrett, um, what do you know? Chuck, I'm in the Russell Building still where we are under quite literal lockdown. I was down in the basement when the doors that connect the basement here uh, to the Capitol through those tunnels were chained shut by Capitol Police using you know, thick metal chains to essentially lock everyone in this building in and make sure none of the rest of this spills over into the, in, into the Capitol complex. Uh, from the balconies here, we can still see much a similar image to what you're showing on the other half of the screen here, thousands of people still surrounding the outside of the building. I just saw a tweet a few moments ago from the press secretary saying that at the president's discretion, the D.C. National Guard will now be mobilized here. Uh, I'm sure that'll be comforting to folks here who've been waiting for quite some time. And as I look ahead just a little bit to some of the political implications of this, that's one of them. This is about to become argument number one for D.C. statehood, where if D.C. were a state like any other, the governor could have simply ordered the guard here without having to go through the bureaucratic process of running it up the chain of command to DOD and the president. So file that one away for later. File away for slightly sooner. How are we going to have a presidential inauguration in this facility in two weeks? I mean, mm. the idea, you know, Capitol Police do a great job, but this was a failure today. And I don't know how you... Now how you how you pull this all together in the next two weeks to say okay now we're safe up here yeah and and how and if they do how much of a police state does it ultimately look like uh, Garrett stick around for us let's uh, bring in Democratic Congresswoman Tammy Duckworth of Illinois Cong um, uh, Congresswoman thank you so I'm Senator I'm sorry I'm reading the prompter even though I know you're a senator I apologize Senator Duckworth um, first of all where are you are you okay. I am in a secure location in the Capitol, though. Thank you very much. I am safe. Uh, uh, the Capitol Police have done a great job in, in protecting us. And uh, describe what you experienced today. Well, I was uh, uh, headed to the tunnel to go give my source speech um, against the, uh, re you know, the uh, rejection of the 
um, the votes for Arizona and uh, when the Capitol Police uh, turned me and said, you need to go and barricade yourself in a secure location at this point in time, and they, they shut everything down. And so and now I am um, just watching the proceedings just like everyone else and waiting to hear when we will start back up again, because we will start back up again. We will continue to breathe. You know, enact uh, our democratic process, and I would not yield to these protesters who are attempting a coup. What happens when you start back up again? We get back up, and we we will go ahead and uh, hear the arguments on either side for um, rejecting or accepting the votes from uh, Arizona, and uh, then we will cast our vote on that case, and then we will hear if there are any other. Um, uh, folks who are rejecting votes from their subsequent states. So we'll be doing them um, in alphabetical order. Do you expect after all of this, the objections to continue? Well, I would hope not. I would hope that we would not have had the objections in the first place. The, you, you will have to ask, um, uh, you know, Senator Hawley and, and, and some of his colleagues and, and President Trump uh, whether they want to push this process forward. But uh, I will not be scared away from carrying out my duties uh, as have been laid out for me in our Constitution. Senator Duckworth, I, look, you, you've, you, you've served, you've served in combat. Um, you know a lot about security procedures and security perimeters and things like this. Um, how did this happen? I mean, I, I, this Capitol complex, this shouldn't have, this felt like it happened a lot, way too easily. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't want to look at the postmortem of what, what happened while we are still in the middle of the incident. I will tell you that um, they, the Capitol Police very safely and securely uh, secured me, and I, you know, I'm a wheelchair user, so it's a little bit harder to get me around as well. Um, but they made sure that I was safe right away, uh, and I know that they are um, uh, doing everything that they can. And I'm glad to hear that the D.C. National Guard is now uh, being allowed to uh, uh, come and to the assistance of both the D.C. police and the Capitol Police. Well, Senator Tammy Duckworth, really appreciate you um, uh, did checking in with us, and I'm glad you're safe, uh, and please continue to be safe. Uh, and and uh, I'm glad to hear that this will not be deterred, because the most disappointing aspect about this is the fact that they successfully delayed this. They have, but they're not going to end it. You know, it, this is still going to end with uh, Joe Biden uh, being elected the president of the United States, which is the will of the American people. And then we need to get to work. We need to get to work and help working families who are struggling right now. We need to fight this COVID pandemic. And we get to, need to get our nation back on track again. And a bunch